Okay, so have a nice day ahead. So let's start the discussion about our introduction to post harvest handling. This is the module one for this online class. Okay, so before we continue, may I would just want to remind you our details. So your accomplishments or your assignments, quizzes, and activities, you may send it through my email, uh, rexgerson at gmail.com. Or you may access my Facebook account, it's there in your screen, my YouTube channel, or we could upload some of the lectures, Rex Gerson. And you may also send your assignment requirements through my messenger, most especially for those who are uh, in uh, far-flung places who have no access to signal. Okay, so let's start first the chapter about this overview of the different activities wherein we have here the five stages of post-harvest handling. So first, we have what we call produce. It produce means it is the harvested yield of a certain product. Either it is a farm, fresh product, or a processed product. Seemingly, the five steps must be followed before it would reach the market. So from harvesting, that's the first step. And packaging is the second step. Or in packaging is the process for us to add value to the product. Most especially packaging adds the premium pricing of the product. Okay. The third step, most especially for the fresh produce, we have here storage. As you can see in the image, storage is very much important to control the supply since perishable goods like vegetables are easily dis uh, uh, dis destroyed, it needs to be stored for a certain period of time while waiting for the supply in the market to be regulated. And then it will be transported to the market by using the proper transportation like uh, air-conditioned truck or refrigerated truck to maintain the freshness of the produce before it will reach the market. And finally, at the market, you will see there it will be displayed or this will be the outlet where will be the produce uh, be sold. No? Okay. Now, let's have the definition. What is post-harvest handling? So, post-harvest handling is the process by gathering uh, the ripened crop and harvesting. No? That's harvest. So, we have here the word post means after. In short, post-harvest means all of the gathering of ripened crops after a single growing season. No? Immediately, post-harvest handling is the situation wherein uh, the production immediately follows the harvest. Like for example, how, will, how would it be handled before it will reach the market? Or this is steps by step process after harvesting. No? So after harvesting, we have here the post-harvest technology that must be employed to the product in order to maintain the freshness of the produce. So the aim of post-harvest technology is to maintain the freshness of the produce. This will avoid deterioration of the product before it will be consumed by the buyer. Okay, we have here three main objectives of post-harvest handling and technology. First objective is to maintain the quality in terms of appearance, texture, flavor, and nutritive value. But most of the customers are what we call product-oriented customer. What is this product-oriented customer? They are more to look on the appearance of the product before they will buy. No? It's uh, for some, 
we have here the nutritive value for and they will consider the composition of the product before they will buy. For example, in fresh vegetables, most buyers look to the appearance of the vegetable. Like for example, cabbage, they prefer cabbage which are first class. No, uh, no, uh, uh, okay, no disease or whatsoever, they will not consider the nutritive content of the values we have here, the commercial versus the organic ones. So for the commercial products, of course, they are maintaining the appearance of those vegetables, but for the organic ones, they are maintaining the nutritive value of the product. So we have here appearance versus nutritive value. Okay, second, to protect food safety. That is one objective of post-service handling and technology. For us, there is what we call biosafety. Okay, this biosafety check and regulate the product. For example, pesticide residues, but nevertheless, the buffs doesn't check uh, if there is a pesticide residue. As a buyer or consumer, we need to protect also ourselves in consuming those vegetables. And lastly, to reduce losses between harvest and consumption. In the next slides, you will be uh, looking for the losses of products from 28 to 42% according to the research. The research conducted by we have here the PHRTC, Post Harvest Research Training Center. It will uh, study the losses between harvest to consumption. Imagine that 28 to 42% losses just because of improper post harvest handling of the produce. Okay, we have here the issues that I've been talking a while ago about the post harvest handling and technology problem in our country. So first, why would that very great loss in vegetable production is very high, 28 to 42%? Well, as you can see in the reason, it's lack of post harvest facilities and technology. 90% of farmers in the Philippines are what we call small-scale farmers. These small-scale farmers cannot avail post-harvest facilities and technology. For example, cold chain storage. A very poor farmer cannot establish a cold chain uh, facility because, well, we know that lack of capital. You will compare uh, Philippines and Israel or Japan in terms of post harvest handling. They are very advanced because they have that technology. Okay, they have that cold chain no? or air conditioned room for them to uh, establish or store their product. Second, they have also the uh, transportation mode like uh, cold chain truck or refrigerated truck before it will reach the market. And this is now a problem because even though we could produce a high yield of vegetables, but it will reach the market, what would happen? No? The 28 to 42% losses is uh, a great loss, not only for a farmer, but also for the handlers. Imagine, uh, Imagine you harvested a fresh produce, like for example, Chinese cabbage, or in local term, they call it ombok. No? First class that it was harvested here in the highlands, but it will reach Manila. How many leaves remain? No? First class dito sa uh, highlands na na-harvest, pero pagdating sa Manila, iilan na lang ang leaves na natira. It's because of improper handling. That's why it caused 28 to 42% post-harvest losses alone. But we are comparing here Philippines to Japan or Israel. How would they maintain 
how would they maintain their produce? Okay. Going back to the five steps of post-harvest handling, what happened is the farmers in those advanced countries directly transport their product to the cities because they have outlet in the cities. And the population in the cities is the target because more population, more target market. Okay, but for our situation, who's conducting post-harvest handling in technology? We have here the middleman. A small-scale Filipino farmer could not afford to establish an outlet in Manila. That's why we have here middlemen or the handlers to conduct post-harvest handling technology in the Philippines. That's why they, have, they are the ones who will market the product in the cities. That's why Philippines is still lagging behind in terms of post-harvest technology. Okay, as I mentioned, nasabi ko na po kanina na ang um, Israel at Japan ay masyadong advanced in terms of post-harvest technology kasi ang mga farmer ay may mga outlet sa syudad. No? But they created that outlet they have that facility because they have that farmers cooperative or farmers association. In Israel, they call that as a community village farm or the kibbutz. In Japan, they call it as Korikoyo. That's why they could establish their outlet in the cities. So they are the one who are conducting post-harvest handling. Wala po silang middleman or handlers. Mismong farmers po ang nagdadala ng kanilang produkto sa syudad. Kaya sila din ang nakikinabang sa market price or mataas na presyo. Well, in fact, sa Pilipinas, kung bakit mahirap ang farmer kasi ang mga middleman ang nagkakandak ng post harvest handling, sila ang nagdadala ng produkto sa Maynila kasi sila ang may outlet sa syudad at sila din ang may post harvest facilities sila ang may call chain truck or trackings kunada iti local dialect no? kaya sila din ang nakikinabang sa market price now i think you've got my point why we have a lot of issues in terms of post harvest standing and technology here in the philippines okay next we have here objectives why we need to apply post-harvest handling in technology. I have mentioned the quality, appearance, and to reduce losses. That's why uh, post, during the post-harvest period, a level of sophistication or application or technology desired to be applied in the product is important. Like for example, the cost handling machineries in high-tech post-harvest handling treatments are very essential. No? Pero sa mga small-scale farmers or handlers, hindi po nila kaya na mag-invest sa costly handling machinery in high-tech post-harvest treatments. It would, it will take millions before you could have cold chain in storage chain and it will take a lot of capital before you were to operate an outlet in manila that is philippine situation and in the slide it mentions here in developing countries like the philippines farmers involving in direct marketing is very inevitable why kasi nga mahirap marating ni farmer ang mga buyer. Okay? Ang nakakarating sa mga buyers ay ang mga tinatawag na handlers. Okay? Handlers po ang tawag natin sa middlemen. Okay, next. Okay, we have here major activities in post-harvest handling in technology, like for example, sizing. Okay. This is important. Sizing, you were to uh, determine the particular uh, desired size of a certain product. It is a form of sorting the product in accordance to size. Curing, okay, that's the third chapter, that is for root crops. 
chemical treatment like for example the leafy vegetables what will you do to the butt or the portion where it cut it must be dipped in a sulfur para hindi masira ang leafy vegetables waxing for some fruits most especially citrus classifying applicable for fruits and vegetables you will classify the product either it is uh, either it is class A, class B, or class C depending upon to the international standards we have the IS okay? international standards in determining the class of certain product if it is for export but for local market will classifying is not uh, being observed storing okay like for example how will you store the local products well we have the bodega you have the storeroom but for perishables we must have the cold chain okay sorting you will sort either it is a reject or it is marketable packing and packaging that is an activity for us to add value of a certain product so in the next chapter you will be determined branding designing and to do the certain different uh, basic boxes and lastly transporting okay we have here post harvest handling types for a typical community so first how would these uh, farm products be transported to a simple community this is in philippine situation we have here the farm we have here the farm produce will either it will reach the rural assembly market or the local market what is an example of a rural assembly market that is a wet market like the invat or the trading post okay but if the farmer has a packing house then it could store the he or she could store the product in his packing house before the buy uh, the seller will come Okay, those middlemen who will buy the product in a bulk amount or maramihan ay tinatawag na wholesaler. Okay, next, those buyers who will buy the product in a li uh, uh, patigitingi or in little amount that is or little volume, we call that as retailers. Okay, there are num various numbers of retailer. Okay, it will take how many retailers in the study? It, re it will reach five to six retailers. Okay, I will give you an example. The farmer brought his product to Invat. Okay, that's the rural assembly market. Now, the middleman who come from the lowland will be considered as wholesaler. So, siya ang magdadala sa Maynila doon sa Balintawak, ang kanyang biniling gulay sa invat. Doon sa Balintawak ay meron din mga buyers na nagmamayari ng talipapa, store, etc. So, he or she will resell the product. That's why you consider store means a small retailers. They are another retailers. So, it will reach the consumer. How would it take? It will take a long time before it will reach the consumer. That's why there's a very big gap between the producers and the consumers. So the farmer will not directly sell the product to the consumer. That is a Philippine handling system situation. It will intervene two different handlers through the hands of wholesaler and retailers. So nakuha po natin na ang wholesaler at retailer sila po ang tinatawag na handlers or sila ang middleman na nagdadala ng produkto bago mabili ng consumer so you would uh, have an analysis bakit sa invat binili nila ang commodity ng 5 pesos pero pagdating sa Maynila bakit 30 it's because nagpapatong-patong ang presyo because of the wholesaler and a lot of retailers. Nagpatong-patong ng presyo. Kaya pagdating sa Maynila, mataas. So that is the unfair situation of our post-harvest handling in marketing system. So hopefully, our government 
we would seek to improve the handling system through that House Bill 7136. We have here harvesting in preparation for the market. So for the small scale producers, they have the option either to harvest earlier if, okay, if those produce are delicate and valuable. Like for example, in what are those products that could be harvested earlier? Okay, we have here what we call greens, okay? Harvested greens. Okay, banana must be harvested earlier. Okay, wag mong antayin na uh, mahinog ang banana sa uh, in the mother plant. No? So what will you do is to harvest earlier as matured green. Another one is citrus and so on and so forth. You will not wait for the product to ripe in the mother plant. Okay. Star apple. Okay. Those are what we call uh, uh, produce or fruits that must be harvested earlier. Okay. Harvest later when fruits are riper in more flavorful stage. Like for example, the climacteric fruits like uh, jackfruit, of course you need, you need to wait for the jackfruit to be more flavorful before you were to harvest. Okay, Dorian, you need to wait before uh, you will harvest them. It must be harvested on more flavorful stage, kaya tinatawag na harvest later. Harvest more often, you have multiple harvests. Okay, makailan kang makaharvest, first harvest, second harvest, or first gather, second gather. Like for example, the beans, okay, legumes, tomatoes, cucumber, okay. You have your first harvest, second harvest. For the beans who are planting beans, they must have at least an average harvest from first to at least sixth harvest before the plant will eventually senescence or die. Next, we have here maturity standards. A maturity standards in simple definition is a criteria you will set before you will harvest the produce. So what certain criteria? Okay, the standard could be in color, okay, in texture, in composition, or pwede rin ang appearance. That is a standard or that is a criteria you will Set. Okay. Next, maturity index means an indication or a sign that the product is ready to harvest. So this is now the sign that the product is ready to harvest. We call it as maturity index. Okay. A good maturity index must have the following. So first, it must have significant relationship with buyers or consumers. I will give you an example. In contract growing for commodities like uh, cucumber, ang gustong gusto ng mga buyer ay parthenocarpic fruits. Ang ibig sabihin ng parthenocarpic fruits ay seedless or undeveloped seeds. No? Gustong gusto ng mga buyer ang undeveloped seeds sa cucumber. So, you need to follow their index. No? Second, it is easy to determine. Third, reliable. And fourth, it is desirable to be applied in the crop. How would it be desirable to be applied in the crop? For example, color is not applicable to uh, leafy vegetables. But color is more often applicable to ripened fruits. The color, either it is yellow or greenish or yellow green. Okay. No? It is easy to do, uh, determine, like for example, how would it easy to determine if your product is root crop? Okay. Or tubers, like for example, potatoes. No? How would you determine their maturity index, okay? Like for example, in potatoes, okay, the leaves are drying. That is an indication that the leaves or the tubers in the soil is already ready for harvest, okay? 
Okay, so we have here some maturity index. No? Elapsed days from full bloom to harvest for stone fruits. What are these stone fruits? Like for example, mango. Those are stone fruits. Stone fruits are considered to be a one-seeded crop or fruit. Okay, like mango. No? So mango has one seed. So it elapsed days from fall bloom to harvest. So you will count the days from, okay, from fruit setting until a uh, full chick, okay, full chick, mangoes, no? okay. Development of abscission layers in melons, okay. What are abscission layers? Okay, so in the abscission layers of melons and apples you were to observe there the we have here the pericarp and the pericarp comprises of three the exocarp the outermost the mesocarp the middle layer and the endocarp or the portion wherein it covers the seed okay next surface morphology and structure okay cuticle formation knitting in melons no? Glossiness in presence of natural wax, like for example in the leaves of those gabi. Okay. In uh, citrus, we have here also the wax. No? The wax, uh, natural wax presence in those fruits. Okay. Size, well, that could be applicable to all. Uh, fruits and vegetables. A specific gravity that is applicable when the commodity pulls. Okay? Like for example, uh, chayote. Okay? You could use a specific gravity uh, if it will pull the vine. Okay? Kung nahihila niya yung vine, that is an indication that the commodity is ready to harvest. Like for example, the chayote. And then, next, shape. Shape, like for example, compactness of flowers and flower vegetables. So what are those flower vegetables? Okay, I think you know already flower vegetables. These are the broccoli, cauliflower, etc. Okay, the curd must be compact. Solidity, that is applicable for head, lettuce, cabbage, brussels sprouts, and other fruits. Okay, textural properties. We have here the firmness, firmness or the solidity of the commodity or the produce. Like for example, apples, pears, and stone fruits. Tenderness, we have it here the peas and the legumes. Okay, kapag nagluluto kayo ng uh, legumes like pads, that's beans or garden pea, you will observe the string, both ends. Okay, if the string will not reach both ends, then the peas or the legumes is tender. Okay, color, we have here the external and uh, color is an external index. So we have here for all fruits and vegetables. And internal color, like for the tomatoes and fresh color of some produce. So the jelly-like material in the tomato is an internal index. Okay, so we have here the maturity indices in terms of compositional factors. Like for example, starch content. Most of the root crops are starch. Okay, starchy. Starch is carbohydrates. Okay, a building block from carbohydrates. Okay, so sugar content, like for example, fruits. So, the sugar content of fruits, we call that as fructose. No? And then acid content, like in citrus, like uh, that citric acid, pawpaw -pow or papaya, melons, and kiwi. Juice content, well, you can determine the maturity index of the fruit in citrus. At least in citrus, you must to observe 70 to 80 percent water or just content before you harvest the commodity. Okay, we have here the oil content for avocado and nuts and some legumes. Astringency or tannin contents, no? 
Tannin is a building block of fats. So we have here persimmon and dates. Internal ethylene concentration, climacteric fruits. Ang ibig sabihin ng climacteric fruits are those fruits which will respond to ethylene gases. Ethylene gases is a ripening gas. Okay. Ano yung mga climacteric fruits? Banana, jackfruit, star apple. Yun. Okay? So, or uh, pwede rin ang goyabano. No? They will res avocado also is a climacteric fruits. No? They will respond, the fruit will respond to ethylene. And ethylene is what we called as ripening gas. Okay. Maamoy mo naman yung ethylene. No? So, so, for example, uh, jackfruit is, has a strong uh, ethylene concentration. No? So, maamoy mo kong hinog na. Okay? Because jackfruit is a climacteric fruits. Well, for non-climacteric fruits, we have here citrus and strawberry. You could not uh, you could not observe ethylene concentration in this commodity. Okay? Non-climacteric, kapag na-harvest mo ang citrus, abay hindi na magde-develop ng sugar. Yung strawberry, pag na-harvest mo na, hindi na magde-develop ng sugar. Kasi uh, it has no more ethylene concentration for non-climacteric. For climacteric, like uh, jackfruit, uh, star apple, goyabano, ap, uh, avocado, of course, they will continuously write and develop sugar content. Okay, maturity index for some important crops, for root crops. Radish and carrots, okay, it must be large enough and crispy. Okay, large enough and crispy. So over matured it is peefy. Okay, a crack, they will be crack kapag na over mature. And that is peefy. Okay. Potato, onion, and garlic. As I mentioned a while ago, that is uh, the indication the leaves will start to dry. And topple down when they will start to uh, dry and topple down. And for yam bean, yam bean is, uh, yam bean is singkamas. No? Okay. And ginger, it must be large enough. Kapag over mature ang yam bean at ginger, you will observe tough in fibrous and a lesser juice content. For green onions or onion leeks, of course, leaves at their broadest and longest. Kapag ma-over matures ang green onions, it will bear flowers. For fruit vegetables, we have here the cowpea. Bean, lima bean, uh, garden bean, winged bean. As I mentioned a while ago, the well-filled pods, okay, it developed a seed in the pod, but the seed must be tender or young. Kapag over mature yung seeds, abay, the pods will be tough. Okay. Ladies finger or okra, okay, desirable size. You can observe in okra that a hard tip will be observed if the okra is over matured. Okay. But if the tip is tender, then it is uh, desirable. Okay, we have here gourds, the bitter and the battle. Bitter gourd, ampalaya, battle gourd, opo. Okay, desirable size rich and thumbnail can still penetrate flesh readily. Kapag na over mature ang gourds, well, yung thumbnail, ang ibig sabihin niyan, the portion that connects the vine to the fruit. Okay, kapag mahaba pa ang thumbnail, well, the gourds, still didn't reach the desirable size. Pero pag yung thumbnail uh, reached the vine, well, that is over matured already. And the seeds are very tough. Okay. Next, eggplant, chayote, and cucumber. Desirable size, rich, but still tender. Ang ibig sabihin yan, if the uh, size rich, okay, if the size reach its over maturity, the seeds are very hard. No? Like for example, in uh, sayote or chayote, you can observe that the 
color is pale. Paling or it starts to fade. Also in eggplant. Okay. If the color of the eggplant is pale or it is fading, then you know that the seeds are tough or over matured. Also in the cucumber. Cucumber must be harvested as parthenocarpic. Parthenocarpic or seedless. Next. Maturity indices for important crops. So sweet corn for vegetables. Uh, we are talking here for vegetables. So sweet corn could be used as a viand. No? So at least it must have a milk in the kernel or in the seed. Next, tomato. We have here seeds sleeping when the fruit is cut. Or the color green turns to pink. You will. It's not advisable that you were to harvest Kamatis when it is the fall red in color. At least green color turning to pink or green color turning to orange or green color turning to light red. But not as ripe fall red. Otherwise, if you are to harvest tomatoes in the late stage of ripening, it has a, sh a shorter shelf life. No? Masira na sa market. Okay, next paper again. Deep green color turning to dull or red. Okay, musk melon or simply melon. You were to observe the vine with a twist leaving a clean cavity. Okay, honeydew melon. You were to observe an aromatic uh, white to cream. White to cream mesocar. Okay, if you were to divide the honeydew melon. You were to observe the mesocarp at least is light to greenish white to green. And for the watermelon, okay. Uh, for the maturity index of the watermelon and honeydew melon, you can thump. You can thump the bottom by hearing it. Hello, sir. Okay. For flower vegetables like cauliflower, Okay, the corn must be compact. The same true with the broccoli. It must be clustered compact. Kapag over matured ang mga yan, the, com the clusters and the curds are uh, lost. Okay. And for lettuce, it must be big enough. Kapag over matured, it will crack. The same true with cabbage. It must be compact. Okay. Dapat hindi ampaw ang mga lettuce at saka cabbage. For celery, of course, it must be big enough before it becomes pithy or the stock starts to crack. Otherwise, wala na pong juice yun. Okay. And uh, for uh, the high tech, uh, we have here uh, using the refractometer to determine the sugar content. Like for example, apple must be harvested uh, maximum of at least 45% sugar soluble content or is C. Kasi yung soluble solid content, that is the juice. No? Kapag kulang pa sa 45%, then it's not ready for harvesting. Kapag 90% sugar content, that is over matured already. Okay? You want to squeeze the juice to determine. It's like an injection that you are to extract the juice from the fruit and it will measure the sugar content. Okay, next, using firmness tester, measuring the degree of softness and crispiness by squeezing the produce by taking a bite. No? So either uh, uh, you are to determine by biting, but we have the firmness tester. Okay. This firmness tester is mostly used in, uh, it's also used in cereals, no? cereals, and it's resistance to completion or forced for you also to determine the, uh, not only the firmness, but also the moisture 
content of the produce. Okay, so we have here your activity one, a reflection paper about the House Bill 7136 as we mentioned the issues with regards to the post-harvest chain in the Philippines or the food chain in the Philippines. Okay, it states here if this, if this bill, House Bill 7136 will be passed is below, how will it benefit the local producers? How will it affect the handling of fresh farm produce? So I will just give you a simple background. So this was proposed by uh, representative of access or congressman Eric Goya that it will mandate nagmamandato ito sa mga uh, catering services mga hotel buy, malalaking buyers mall etc to buy products directly to the farmers but this is very difficult kasi if I am the company, I will buy the product in uh, through association. Like for example, the Multifresh Retailing Vegetable Company. Of course, for me to supply my uh, customer regularly, well, I will connect with association. Because Filipino farmers are small-scale farmers. Farm-to-table uh, deal ito. No? So, I just sent the discussion about this. It will help the farmers to market their products with a prevailing price based from the farm gate price. No? Para hindi malogi si farmer. Ang farm gate price, ibig sabihin yan, uh, it will expense the uh, capital of the farmer and Siyempre, the farmer will not uh, lose. No? Hindi basta-basta magpresyo ka ng commodity mo without computing your farm gate price. So farm gate price is computed as uh, expenses divided by total yield. No? Expenses divided by total yield for you to know how much will you price to uh, 1 kilo. Okay? And then, uh, dapat more than, okay? Yung nakompute doon, dapat more than yung price niya sa farm gate. Ang ipapresyo ni farmer. Okay. So, this house bill is still in the reading in the House of Representatives. Or in, it, uh, it will direct, directly mandate the buyers, most especially the big establishment, to buy directly to a group of farmers. Next, here are the questions for you to answer. So, why post service handling in the Philippines varies from middleman? I explained it a while ago. There are a lot of hindrances among farmers or producers. That's why the middleman are the one who handle the product to the buyers. Have mentioned that. Second, why 28 to 42 percent are considered to be a solosis in the food chain or in the post harvest uh, process? Okay, food chain or post harvest uh, process is just the same. Okay, I have mentioned a while ago that 28 to 42 percent is very high because of a lot of problems in post harvest handling. Okay, so you had to mention the handling system, the capacity of Filipino small-scale farmers, and most importantly, the technology. Kung bakit maraming nasasayang na vegetables. Okay, next. And not only vegetables, but also other products. Mataas kasi yung 28 to 42%. I had given an example of a first-class cabbage that was harvested, pero pagdating niya sa buyer in Manila or in the city nagiging third class na okay so paano nangyari yun so you were to give a story about that and lastly why local producers and farmers in the Philippines has a big up towards handling can this situate your answer to the post harvest situation of Israel and Japan I explained about the kibbutz and the curriculum system of those countries just compare it to the Philippines Okay, 
you may send your answers through my email or through my messenger if your signal is very uh, inevitable. I will give you an extension. You need to submit it until September 18, 2020. I will be uploading. I will be uploading this in the YouTube, in our YouTube account, and you just drop your comments in our YouTube if you did not understand, so that I can answer or I could intervene. We could discuss there. Okay, we could discuss. Or if you want to ask questions with the presence of your classmates, kasi parang recitation yun yan. You were to drop your comments in your class group chat. In your class group chat. Okay, so that may be all and have a nice day ahead.